there are actually these venomous marine snails that are among the deadliest creatures on the planet. And they are so deadly, they can kill a 200 pound person in under three minutes. And when scientists discovered this, and they discovered how potent that venom was, they began taking that venom and back to the lab, synthesizing the proteins in it and creating painkillers for humans that are alternatives to opiates. We began looking at what's happening in education and what teachers are using in their classrooms and sort of the trends of like, what are kids into? What do they like doing? And what are teachers trying to use to get kids excited about content that they may not have been excited about before? And largely, where is the biggest need in science, right? Yeah. So where we saw the biggest need in science that aligned to these venomous marine snails was starting in sixth grade, kids really start dropping out of science, and especially girls. And so we wanted to sort of create a game, a way of, of having kids play a game um, where they would learn this complicated content, but they wouldn't really realize that they were learning it because they're playing a deck building card game. So the mechanics of the game itself is what's teaching the content. And so it's um, they don't really see it as typical rote instruction. It's not linear in a way that traditional instruction is. In the game, you are a scientist and you are trying to discover what these peptides are that will make up this painkiller. And we call those the cabals, which is what they're called in real science. And you are feeding and caring for your snails. And by feeding them different prey, they produce different peptides. Again, just like they do in nature. The predator of the turtle is teaching what the predators do to these creatures in, in, in real life. They go diving into the ocean. They find these venomous snails. They pick them up with their salad tongs. <laughs> <laughs> and they bring them back to the lab where they synthesize um, the venom glands or they synthesize the peptide within the venom glands and then they create these biomedical applications for us as humans. They learn the different roles of the scientists. They see themselves as not just scientists in the lab, but scientists who could do a host of things. There's um, like one button on a uh, Google Cardboard, but you can either tap it, you can hold it down, you can double tap it. And we started thinking about what we could track and measure using basically just positional tracking and a one-click button. Yeah, so we're leveraging basically a $10 piece of equipment to collect some really valuable data about the way that children are engaging in the game. What are they looking at? What are they curious about? And how are they engaging with it um, based on just a simple button? We're able to track data from it so that we can actually see what they're doing, where they're spending time on, where they're looking, what they're curious about. So we're building all of that into the game so that it stays the exact same sort of fun experience, but that teachers and people on the back end can look and see and say like, oh, kids seem to be really interested in trying to catch these lobsters. Let's let's add another feature onto here where they can catch the lobsters and then we can tell them all about lobsters and build in like a little mini session on that. We have preliminary research here um, from a couple of different schools. What it showed was by simply depositing this digital game on the laps of these students pre and post testing, um, they had an average um, knowledge acquisition of between 18 and 27 percent, which is pretty fantastic, having no prior knowledge, right? So there's no um, foundational information that their teachers are giving them. They can step back and say, oh, I could do that. I could see myself doing this type of science. So for us, that this pre very preliminary data is very exciting. This NSF funding has really helped us. I mean, we were able to present our work to audiences that we never would have accessed before. We're very grateful to have it, and we're really excited for the kids that are now seeing themselves as active participants in science. Killer snails hiding on the ocean floor.